This is Peter Balin playing at Peachwood Park in Colesville, Maryland. Just another normal play day for this four and a half year old. We didn't really have a choice in, in what we could do with it. He had to have it amputated. There was some bone exposed. Peter and Danny are identical twins. Because of complications during their mother, Jennifer's pregnancy, a surgery saved their lives. But the complication led to Peter's right leg not developing, leading to an amputation and the need for a prosthetic. One of four brothers, an obvious worry for Jennifer would be that he could not keep up and his childhood development would be stunted. For a long time, people gave us, you know, the, the sad face, like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's so sad. I want you. Yeah, I want you. And I want you. But because of advancements in prosthetics and unique circumstances, Peter's development has been given a new life. With twin brother Danny close by at all times, it is easy to see their two different personalities. And despite losing the leg, it has been a trailblazing journey for Peter, whose father, Eric, is a doctor at the Naval Hospital in Bethesda. I went into the department initially to say, you know, here's the situation. I have a, uh, a young son who's an amputee, and, you know, of course, right now, they um, spend the majority of their time and efforts taking care of uh, the wounded um, you know, servicemen and women coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. At the time, a, a three-month-old uh, is not their typical patient. Um, so they said, well, sure, we're happy to take a look at him, though. And so he came in, and um, a team of, team of experts from the, uh, from the uh, Walter Reed Army Medical Center came in and took a look at Peter. And, um, and, and Dave Beekler, uh, pretty quick, uh, came to the forefront and said, you know what? I think we can do something with this. Count if I touch your new leg, or does it have to be the whole part of you? <laughs> As we can clearly see Peter's almost unimpeded development with what he calls his new leg, it all started with a crawling prosthesis, one of the first of its kind, and which now has been chronicled in medical journals. It allowed Peter to keep up with his twin brother and to eventually start walking on a newly developed prosthetic leg for a toddler. And this development is a two-way street for Peter and the vets coming back from war. Peter is not your, your average patient um, at Walter Reed. Um, you know, the, uh, the vast majority of patients there are you know, 18 to 30-year-old um, you know, active duty men and women who have, who have lost limbs um, serving the country. You know, Peter was able to look at these men and women who have come in with devastating injuries, yet are out in the hallway, you know, kicking a soccer ball and doing push-ups and pull-ups. And, you know, these are patients that have lost both legs, potentially, or both legs and an arm, and are le leading normal lives. And that was a great thing for Peter to see and his brothers that, hey, you know, this is not an insurmountable injury. We've been told by a lot of them that will come up and say, you know, I'm watching your son and the things he's doing, and, it, and it's really... Uh, really pretty amazing and pretty inspiring. As, as a lot of soldiers have said, hey, if a three-year-old can do this, I can do this. With technological advancements continuing to further the ability of amputees, Peter will soon get his rubber foot replaced with a spring-loaded piece that looks like a strut on a car, as well as a fully automated microprocessing knee. We anticipate him having, having no limitations. Um, and the technology over the last 10 years, where they've gone with prosthetics and where they, where they continue to go, uh, is truly amazing. Can you sit up here for a moment? So that when he bends, the foot rotates, the whole bottom rotates, and the foot itself actually does and then has a snap that snaps back into place. Peter? Peter, how, how old are you? Four and a half. Now, and all the, the developmental tests that he's had with regard to physical therapy and things, just recently he had one, and he tested within the average range of four-year-old kids in a series of tests, you know, being running, throwing, catching, um, and those are kids who have two legs. So he was able to, you know, stay within that normal range. Right now, Peter is able to keep up with his brothers and is just happy being included. And at this point, Peter isn't being treated differently by his peers at school. I think it took a couple days, his first day at preschool, even in wearing shorts, that the kids actually even noticed that there was anything different about him. And then um, somebody asked him and he told, you know, he told the kids, this is, he calls it his new leg. This is my new leg. I was born without one, so I have this. And he usually shows how fast he can kick it. <laughs> 
Peter's father, Eric, jokes that the NFL will have to ban Peter's leg, otherwise he'll kick 80-yard field goals with his titanium foot one day. But for now, his parents are just happy that he's just one of the guys. You know, he's found a way to keep up, and he doesn't want to be treated any differently. And Peter's happy to make use of the playground like any four-and-a-half-year-old.